Hi guys, in this video we're gonna go over NEAR protocol. We're gonna break down what is NEAR, how it works, how is it different from other blockchains, why is it unique. Also we're gonna dive into its tokenomics. And the goal of this video is not to make you NEAR expert, but to give you enough expertise and give you enough analytics, data and knowledge so that you can make a wise decision whether it's worth investing in NEAR and whether this token can make 100 X return. And before we jump in, my name is Arseny, welcome to Vesper channel. Please smash the like button as this really helps the uh, with the algorithm and let's get started. So Near Protocol is a decentralized application platform with a focus on uh, developer usability and user friendliness. Near uses proof of stake consensus mechanism and it relies on sharding technology in an attempt to solve blockchain scalability issues. It uses its own sharding uh, technique called uh, Nightshade and uh, sharding is what Ethereum is trying to implement in their new version, which is Ethereum 2.0 that is going to be rolled out in September, which is going to allow uh, Ethereum to scale from 20 transactions per second network throughput to, to almost 100,000 transactions per second. And by the way, this is what NIR's current uh, network throughput is. So we can deal with 100,000 transactions per second, which is uh, really a lot. And so the way sharding works is that so usually on blockchains that work on proof of work like for example ethereum right now and uh, and bitcoin there are some validators or miners and they're responsible for verifying transactions and for essentially maintaining the blockchain and because of that every single node or validator um, or miner is verifying every single transaction and this really slows down the transaction speed and so uh, there are two ways to go around this issue and one of them is vertical sharding when you decrease number of uh, shards number of nodes therefore less verification is required and also you can improve the hardware improve the technology and performance of those nodes and this is gonna indeed help you but this really goes against the concept of decentralization because the whole network is relies just on a few uh, validators is, and is not really decentralized and the second approach is horizontal sharding when you split up the network uh, between multiple shards you split up into different fragments and by doing so the computational load on a single node decreases as uh, each node is responsible for each uh, for its own task like for example one node is responsible for governance uh, other node is responsible for one part of transactions uh, another one is responsible for example only for usdt smart contracts and by doing this you just increase this uh, transaction throughput uh, capabilities of a network and so this is what allows near to cope with 100,000 transactions per second and of course this is not a, a single uh, feature of near also it's carbon friendly additionally 30% of all transaction fees that are collected by NEAR, they go back to developers. Also, it's incredibly user-friendly and developer-friendly. It has its own academy, its own university, where it has a bunch of courses, different workshops, where everyone can learn how to develop on NEAR and become a NEAR developer. And this really uh, allows them to scale and to grow their community really, really fast. And the final feature is that it's really decentralized. In the case of Bitcoin, 50% of all mining power is centralized within three or four different farming pools. And in the case of NIR, that works in proof of stake, where you need to hold some number of tokens, some number of NIR. So you stake them and this is how you validate them. And uh, essentially, if you stake, if you hold a bunch of uh, tokens of the system, then of course you're not really enticed into damaging this system. So in, in the case of NIR, the number of tokens that one validator can stake is limited and this means that there won't be any case where one validator can uh, control can stake 50 percent of all tokens and therefore perform uh, something like 51 percent attack as this can be done with bitcoin this is called uh, thresholded uh, proof of stake and this really keeps near decentralized and makes it uh, more secure so that was it for the near technologies and now let's jump into its tokenomics and its token and before we do that i really want to focus on and highlight investors that have that have put their faith uh time efforts and money into near and those are really prominent ones coinbase ventures au21 
uh, XRP Capital, Alameda Research, Pantera Capital, and A16Z, which is Anderson Horowitz. This is not just one of the top funds in crypto industry, but it's like one of the top venture funds in the world of like all startups in the Silicon Valley. So really, really solid investors here. Now let's talk about the uh, token usage. And this is important because this explains why token is going to be bought in the future. And so what actually drives up the price aside from speculation that people want to do with uh, near. So the first one is staking. So if you want to become a validator and uh, you want to get rewards from this, you need to stake tokens. So in near Explorer, we can see all nodes, all of validators. And right now there are a hundred of them. And we see that the minimum number of tokens that uh, a validator needs to become a node and to verify transactions is 200,000. And right now you need like $1 million uh, to become one. But you can buy near tokens, stake them and delegate them uh, to those huge validators. You can select validator, the one that you want, the one that really appeals to you, and you just delegate your tokens to them and uh, you begin staking. And the rewards that you're going to be getting from this is almost 11% annually, which is twice higher than for taking Ethereum. Also, what's important is that 40% of all circulating tokens in near are staked. And this is a great and very bullish sign because less tokens are in the circulating supply and therefore there's weaker selling pressure on near and this decreases the selling pressure and allows it to grow faster. And also this increases the stability of near. So in the case of uh, market swings, like for example, uh, right now, those who are staking tokens, they are not incentivized, they won't be able actually even to uh, sell those tokens if they want instantly when they see that the price declines. And uh, this just makes it more stable and less volatile. And the second reason for uh, get a near token is to pay for network fees. So every time you want to make a transaction, you want to execute a smart contract on near, you need to pay some fees, and those fees are going to be paid in near. So therefore, you need to get some near before you're making any transactions or uh, performing any actions on the blockchain. Now let's get into the most important part when it gets to the economy of uh, any project on the blockchain. If we get to the funding rounds, we can see that Nier has done a bunch of private sales. And this is not a great sign because the more tokens go to private buyers and big institutions like uh, huge venture investors, this means that usually those tokens are sold for like few cents. So here we can see that for the first private sale, investors have got the tokens for $0.3 for like 3.7 for almost 4 cents. And at the current price of Nier, this provides them with like 150x ROI on their investment. And of course, this incentivizes them to sell the token. But we're going to go over why this is not a big issue now. But anyway, a bunch of tokens were sold to private investors. Uh, and the great news is that 120 million, which is like 15% of all tokens, were they went to community sale. And when publicity gets, and this is always a great indicator of a healthy economy of a token, because when a significant part of tokens go to publicity to public retail investors like you and me this incentivizes huge investors that bought the token on private sale to perform some kind of manipulations as for example uh, was the case with solana so what investors can do for example if only one percent of tokens is allocated to public investors they can buy back those tokens, they're going to suck out all the liquidity and uh, this is just going to take out all selling pressure. This is going to just eliminate all possible sellers of the token and it's going to make it very easy for those manipulators, for big holders of uh, Nier to pump up the price, to make it skyrocket, to make it go to the moon, like it was in the case with the Solana again, and to sell it at very, very high prices. This is not the case with Nier, so there is less possibility of pump and the subsequent dump. And if we go to the supply schedule here, we can see that at this point we are somewhere here. And right now, 800 million, which is around 80% of all Nier tokens, are released. They're already circulating in the supply. They're in the market, and so there won't be a case. There is a huge unlock of tokens that are dumped onto the market, and which just dumps down the price. And even better news is that tokens that were allocated for public investors and seed investors that bought it for a few cents, they are already 
already in their hands. So, and this probably means they have already sold them and they won't do this in the future. So they won't make the price plunge. So the rest of the tokens is gonna be released gradually and most of the future release tokens are staking rewards and community grants. And when it comes to the inflation, and inflation here is 5% a year. And this means that uh, every year 5% of all supply gets released and those tokens they're like newly generated and so out of this five percent ninety percent they go to validators for stakers and ten percent of those five percent so 0.05 percent of all supply it goes every single year to the treasury of near and it is used to fund new developers with their new ideas with their revolutionary approaches so that near ecosystem can benefit from them and uh, those five percent they're actually are nothing in comparison to like the whole supply and they won't harm the tokenomics in any way this is in my opinion and if you want to become a staker you need to create your own near wallet and this is not difficult to do at all so you go to wallet.near.org make sure that you're on the right url then then you select the right language you click on the create account and get started um, secure passphrase unless you're using the cold wallet as a ledger hardware wallet then you just copy this phrase you press continue and actually you need to store this phrase in a very secure place because if anyone reaches out to this phrase they can essentially just paste it in your wallet they can log into your wallet and steal all of your funds so make sure that you stored in the right place and taking a picture is not a good thing it's definitely a very bad approach because there are a lot of cases when uh, people do that then hackers hack into their iClouds and they steal all of their funds there so I'm just going to create this wallet I'm not going to be using this wallet later and uh, here you can send money you can receive money uh, and also you can stake if you want you just select the validator that you like and yeah this is how you begin staking near tokens now, probably you have a question, okay, how can I transfer my funds from Ethereum, let's say, uh, or BSC, uh, Binance Smart Chain to NIR? And this is where Rainbow Bridge comes in. So you can select your uh, Ethereum network, you can connect your MetaMask, and then you can transfer your USDT, your Ethereum, or any other token. It's just going to be wrapped, it's going to be like transferred into NIR, and you're going to use it, you can sell it, trade it, whatever. So this process is very easy thanks to the Rainbow Bridge that NIR team has developed. And the main tool for swapping tokens is ref.finance. So here you can connect your uh, NIR wallet and you can swap NIR into USDC, USDT, and the transaction fees are gonna be incredibly low, like not even a cent, much lower. So this is not Ethereum where fees are like, can get like to $20, $50, like even $100 per just one, per one swap. Here it's, it's like a fraction of a cent nothing so these two were just a very small part of the whole near ecosystem near ecosystem is constantly uh, being developed by the developers uh, and this is thanks uh, to the community that near is gathering so uh, they again do a lot of workshops uh, courses universities uh, they give a lot of grants to different startups young and ambitious companies and the their ecosystem is growing quite fast right now they have around uh, almost like 800 uh, different projects that are launched on year and this was just after two years after the mainnet launch which was in the october i guess of 2020 oh and also i forgot oh my gosh i uh, i forgot to show you aurora which is an imperative part of near ecosystem so in essence it allows developers on ethereum to migrate uh, to near with as little friction as possible so they can use solidity and uh, all tech stack all coding languages and all tools that they were using for building applications on uh, ethereum previously and now they can use them on near and they can launch their own applications on near and aurora so this really facilitates this transition that um, a lot of developers are, are doing right now and also anytime we talk about ecosystem of any project we always go to github here we can see that uh, near core this is their main library and we can see that constantly someone is working on their repositories like we can see that some there are a lot of changes that are like three days ago some are a while ago but some were just three hours ago right now actually 80 people are watching onto this um, repository we can see that almost 2,000 developers have marked and have favorited 
this repository, 4,400 commits were done and one commit means that mm, a change was made to the repository. So in total, they have done like 4,400 like small changes and overall they have done over 100 releases. And when it comes to the number of contributors, there is like 100 developers and their team is very strong. Uh, they have a lot of guys from Google and other strong teams. They're developing on Python, Rust and like, which is like very common tech stack for uh, blockchain projects. And the most important figure here is fork because every single fork means that someone is leveraging near this repository, so near blockchain to build their applications. And we can see that this number is 350. Three. And finally, let's talk about the price uh, and do some little, some quite shallow technical analysis. I'm not an expert in technical analysis, but I'm going to highlight some key points here. So let's scale out and here we can see that, um, so the all-time high was at $20. That was in the winter of 2022 and essentially all market was like hidden. A lot of tokens, a lot of altcoins were hidden their all-time highs. But what's really prominent about NEAR is that most of the tokens in the second pump, which was in April, it was like the most recent pump. Um, most of them were like here. So like for example, Polkadot at its all-time high, like in December 2021, it was at like $44. And then in April, it also got pumped, but like only to $25. And near its pump in April was almost the same as the pump in the winter. And this just shows that another evidence that supports its uh, the power of, of its strong tokenomics and the supply release schedule that we have reviewed previously in the video. And so this pump in April, I guess this was the result of the small manipulation of private investors, of uh, investors that have invested at a private stage. Uh, we have seen that somewhere here a lot of the tokens got released and they have sold some here, but also because they had a lot of near coins that got released and they wanted to sell them because they know that market has already hit like all-time highs and it actually might not recover, they decided to make a pump. And in this place, they decided like to get rid of most of their tokens and they sold them. So I'm not sure that near is going to get back to these values, but actually it doesn't need to. So some decent profits can be made on the level of $15. And for that, Nier has to do three axes, which is doesn't seem like an feasible task for an altcoin and for an altcoin with such a strong foundation. When it comes to all-time lows, Nier price was brought down like, let's say $3. And from now, so if you decide to buy now, it's definitely a great price. And I don't think that it's worth trying to time the market because right now we're like, uh, as of August uh, 2022, we're going through uh, some kind of bullish rally and uh, if you think that right now you're buying it like at a very high price of course you can wait because i'm a strong believer that the uh, prices for bitcoin is going to go down in september october there's just not enough liquidity for us like to go to 60k or 100k per bitcoin again so i strongly believe that you can wait some time and buy near later at much lower prices and you just need to wait. So that was it for Nier. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. And when it comes to me, I'm personally investing in Nier, and it takes around like 20% of my portfolio. I believe in this coin and I can see that it has a bright future. But this is again my personal opinion. Don't just like follow the suit because uh, this is what I'm doing. Always follow your own risk management strategy. If you don't know what it is, watch that video where I'm talking about the investor psychology and money management, risk management. And again, nothing is a financial advice here. Uh, this is like a very stupid phrase that I just have to say in every single video. I don't know why, like everyone is saying it. So I guess that this is what needs to be done. But anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe to the Vesper channel and see you in the next videos. Bye bye.